So here's our final phase for the Lork Hemi speakers. Uh, we have the top and the base, which was wonderfully done and painted by Eric and Brian. Um, and we have to now assemble everything. So we have three amps for six speakers. Each one will be powering two. Then we have the front faceplate, which will be put into the speaker, which has the, the multi-channel diffusion plus the three power supplies and the switch. Um, we've opted for this kind of design. That was Eric's doing. It's really beautiful. And he has also appropriately cut this here so we can put it in there. Uh, if you choose to do the different kind of a faceplate, obviously you would have to adjust accordingly. We like this design before because, first of all, it doesn't cut much of the wood out. So it is not very intrusive and it retains most of the integrity of the wooden piece. We also like it because it's minimal. We also opted to use this light pipe here. And that one will be gunked up to one of the amps, like so, when we get inside and put some hot glue on top of it. And that will transfer enough of the light to going outside. We could have also obviously desoldered these and then put them outside, but that would have been much more work and we would have been chancing overheating the board and damaging some parts too. So we've decided this would be much better. The other advantage of this kind of design is that actually this sheds just a little bit of light in there. So just enough for you to be able to figure out that there's light coming out. And that should be good enough. Last thing to mention here is that this panel is plastic, so it's a little bit bendable, which works great because these pieces are not curved like the surface of, of the Hemi speakers. So therefore, uh, it allows for that kind of correction of the pieces in there for stuff to actually sit better. Uh, one thing we also did here is we gunked up all of the connectors simply just to remove any possibility of them actually ever shorting out, particularly this one here. And the other thing is on the on the switch, we found out that it's a good thing to just put a little bit of gunk on both ends here because otherwise the edge will extrude because it's flat, whereas this is curved. So the first thing we need to do is, I'll put this on the side for a second, is we need to prepare the base. This is the base that's going to go under. They have pre-drilled holes here. Again, this was a great job by Eric and Brian and several things that we can align with. One is this hole here, which will be right next to this hole and so on and so forth. The other thing is also the sort of the L hook here that we can use to eventually attach the hook on the outside of the case and therefore we can carry the thing. Um, this is very important because this way we're also transferring the weight bearing from the outside case to the bottom case. Okay, so first thing is we take these plastic screws, just like that, push them under six of them. Then we add the spacers. This will elevate the amps just a little bit off the wooden board so that solders don't get squished down there or stuff doesn't get overly pressed. And then we take the amps. For our arrangement we opted to arrange them this way. Because of the length of the wires we picked out so this is where we have a routed area for the connectors and then we'll have the audio connectors from the main faceplate going into the three amps. Each one of these are stereos. Um, and then we we'll also have the power coming from this end. And then these lamps here will be exposed so we can then easily run the light pipe on the flip side as well as relieve some room from the T-hook. These guys actually end up working out pretty snug in the end. So we put some nuts on top here. Tighten it up. Uh, ideally, you want to do two rows, like Eric suggested, because that will prevent the stuff from. I have two big fingers. Stuff from unscrewing from the vibrations and stuff like that. We'll tighten them from the bottom. That should be good now. You can kind of push them around a little bit to align them so they're more or less parallel to each other. So that takes care of that. The next step is putting the faceplate in. So we'll put these through the hole and try to adjust what you have to be careful of if you do choose to use our design is the gunk on top and the bottom it has to be pretty thin because otherwise it's not going to fit quite right and could cause all kinds of problems. Like 
breaking of the faceplate, for instance. We put the screws. In our case, this screw here goes into pre drilled hole there, so that one will not be screwed in completely for that reason. You may want to apply some soap, like Eric recommended, to make this easier. So we have this part done, I'll push it through outside of one of the holes so it doesn't get in our way for the time being. The other thing we need to do with the base before we proceed is putting this L-shaped thingy with the screw and the washer down below. I probably wouldn't tighten it until we know exactly if it's angled well for the T-hook to hook up into. So I just kind of hand tighten so those guys still in some, some leeway to adjust. So then we clump this stuff up, put the base on top of it, and we can align any of the holes we like. Like for instance, here, down here at the bottom, we have a hole pre drilled. So we can align it that way and gently push it on there. And as you can see from the inside, there's one screw here that's kind of sticking out. The other one should be going directly in the hole, so right here, if you can see that. And this hole should be aligned well. So there's our base. We can run the screw through the L hook. And we put the T hook on the other end. to put the screwdriver in there to prevent it from rotating. So let's open it just a little bit like this. Can you see it well like that? Now we need to screw in the remaining screws around the perimeter, including the one that we didn't screw in here. And they should go pretty easily in if everything is aligned well because of the holes being pre-drilled. so far. Okay. So, that's the outside of the actual case.